Welcome everyone, join us today as we embark on a journey into the life and legacy of Mick Tucker, the renowned drummer of the iconic glam rock band Sweet. From his humble beginnings as a young boy with a passion for drawing, to his meteoric rise to fame on the drum kit, Tucker's story is one of talent, determination, and musical innovation. So let's dive in. Mick Tucker born Michael Thomas Tucker on the 17th of July 1947 in Kingsbury, North West London, England. Mick, born to Hubert and Ellen Tucker, discovered his passion for music at a young age, initially drawn to the world of drawing. However, by the age of 14, his interests shifted to the drums, inspired by the likes of Sandy Nelson, Buddy Rich, and Gene Krupa. Recognizing his son's potential, Hubert Tucker offered Mick a drum kit under one condition, that he would dedicate himself wholeheartedly to drumming. With unwavering support from his father, he landed his son's first gig at a local workingman's club. Tucker impressed the band and audience as a stand-in for Brian Bennett of the legendary British beat group The Shadows, unaware at the time of the importance of who he was replacing. A natural talent on the drums, Tucker's skill rapidly developed, and by the age of 18, he was already performing in pubs and clubs with Wainwright's Gentlemen, a Harrow cover band featuring Deep Purple's vocalist Ian Gillan. Their repertoire blended Motown and R&B with a touch of psychedelia, reflecting the musical trends of the era. In 1968, Brian Connolly replaced Gillan, the lead singer, however, Tucker's flamboyant style led to his dismissal from the band, prompting lead singer Brian Connolly to depart as well. Undeterred, Tucker and Connolly joined forces to establish a new band, ultimately giving rise to band Sweet Shop. With Tucker, Brian Connolly, and bassist Steve Priest already on board, the classic lineup wasn't complete until 1970 when Andy Scott joined the group. Originally featuring guitarist Frank Torpy, the band later replaced him with Mick Stewart. After learning that another band was already using the name Sweet Shop, they changed their name to The Sweet. Prior to their breakthrough success with hits penned by Mike Chapman and Nicky Chin, the band released four unsuccessful singles. These early recordings, including tracks with both Torpy and Stewart, were compiled onto the album, first recordings 1968 to 1971, which also included four previously unreleased tracks. After signing with RCA and teaming up with songwriters Nicky Chin and Mike Chapman in 1971, Sweet soared to unstoppable success. From late 1972 onward, Tucker became synonymous with his iconic Ludwig Chrome over wood 8-piece drum kit, which remained a staple throughout his career. His distinctive stick twirls became as recognizable as the drum kit itself. While touring in Belgium, Tucker temporarily utilized a five-piece Ludwig kit before incorporating it into his existing four-piece set upon returning. He then unified the entire ensemble by re-wrapping them all in chrome, solidifying his signature sound and style. With hits like, Funny Funny, Coco, and Little Willie, sweeping across Europe, Sweet grew weary of the poppy material provided by the Chinachaps, yearning to showcase their musical prowess. The collaboration peaked with the riotous Blockbuster, a chart topper in 1973, but tensions led to a split a year later. Determined to assert their musicianship, Tucker, Connolly, Priest, and Scott penned hits like Fox on the Run and Action in 1975, reshaping their image from glam to bona fide rockers. Transitioning to Polydor in 1978, they released Love is Like Oxygen, reminiscent of Queen's grandeur, but Connolly departed the following year. After becoming a trio, Sweet released, Call Me, as their first single with Priest taking on most lead vocals. They toured with guest keyboardist Gary Mobley and guitarist Ray McCriner joined later. They toured with Journey and Cheap Trick in 1979, impressing Cheap Trick's drummer Barney Carlos with Tucker's energetic drumming style, reminiscent of Keith Moon. Tucker's double bass drumming stood out, especially on songs like, Ballroom Blitz, with Carlos recalling how they jammed together on stage during encores, sharing memorable moments and great times. After album, Cut Above the Rest, Sweet released, Water's Edge, featuring hits like, 60s Man, and, Give the Lady Some Respect. Sadly tragedy struck with Tucker's wife's drowning in 1979, prompting the band to stop live performances in 1980. Their final studio album, Identity Crisis, was only released in West Germany and Mexico. A brief UK tour ended in March 1981, after which Priest returned to the US. When Polydor released, Identity Crisis, in October 1982, the original suite had disbanded. Afterward, Tucker joined band The Munros, until in 1986, when he and Andy Scott reformed Sweet, competing in the nostalgia circuit alongside the new suite, fronted by Brian Connolly. Scott and Tucker's new version of Sweet, had Paul Mario Day on vocals, Phil Lanzan on keyboards, and Mal McNulty on bass. They toured extensively and recorded live shows, releasing them with new studio tracks later. 
Singer Paul Day left in 1988, and McNulty took over vocals while Jeff Brown joined on bass. Phil Lanzan's role was temporarily filled by several musicians until Steve Mann joined in 1989. Tucker reluctantly left in 1991 due to health issues, with the band continuing with various drummers. After Tucker's passing in 2002, the band would revert back to its original name, The Sweet. Tucker's retirement from music coincided just as a new generation discovered Sweet through Tia Carrere's cover of Ballroom Blitz in the 1992 film Wayne's World. Personally, Tucker was married twice. In 1973, he married his first wife, Pauline, in a fairy tale wedding at the Church of the Sacred Heart in Ryslip, Middlesex. Moving into a house on Beverly Road, Ryslip, close to a school where plenty of fans and schoolgirls would daily besiege the house to get an autograph or a glimpse of their idol. The basement of the modern white and beige furnished house is where Tucker installed a sound studio where he would spend hours working on new songs. His music room adorned with gold and silver albums showcased his global success, yet he found solace in playing tennis, collecting glass figurines, and cooking. Despite his tough exterior, Mick had a sensitive side, symbolized by his cherished half-moon and star necklace, his constant companion and good luck charm. Tragedy struck with the loss of his first wife, Pauline, in 1979, who drowned in the bathtub, possibly due to an accident, leaving behind their daughter Aston. Tucker later found love again with second wife Janet, until his passing in 2002. Tucker's drumming prowess was unparalleled, often overlooked but essential to sweet sound. Renowned for his technical brilliance and soulful groove, he impressed with his impeccable timing and passionate playing. Using Promark American Hickory 419 sticks adorned with the Sweet logo, his drum solos were masterpieces of improvisation, often featuring the iconic theme from The Man with the Golden Arm. Tucker's innovative use of projection screens added visual flair to his performances, captivating audiences with synchronized drum and timpani displays. Despite the glam image of Sweet, Tucker maintained a playful attitude, embracing onstage alter egos with his bandmates while ensuring every performance was a blend of technical excellence and showmanship. Diagnosed with leukemia, Tucker retired from music. In 1997, he underwent a bone marrow transplant from his brother to combat his leukemia. Despite initially going into remission, he faced recurring infections. Sadly, on 14 February 2002 Mick Tucker succumbed to leukemia in Wellwyn Garden City, Hertfordshire, he was 54 years old. His wife Janet, and his 22-year-old daughter Aston and niece Angela were at his bedside when he passed. Tucker's funeral occurred on February 25, 2002. His resting place is in Chorleywood House Cemetery, in an unmarked grave. However, fans honored his memory with a wooden bench featuring a brass plaque nearby, serving as a touching tribute to the legendary drummer. Steve Priest said of Tucker, he was the most underrated drummer that ever came out of England. He was the powerhouse of the band. He was technically marvelous. His timing was impeccable, but he had a lot of soul as well and he really felt what he was playing. Adding to bassist Steve Priest's high appreciation, guitarist Andy Scott said, Mick Tucker was the best drummer around in the 70s. I played in the same band as him and was proud to do so. I feel extreme sadness therefore that he has now left us and my heart goes out to Janet and Aston with their sad loss. Other drummers who were influenced by Tucker are, Jack Irons from Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pearl Jam, and Wallflowers, Snowy Shaw from King Diamond, Dream Evil, Merciful Fate, and Jason Heartless from Ted Nugent. And there you have it. As we conclude our journey through the life and death of Mick Tucker, we honor his contributions to music and his indelible mark on rock history. From his electrifying performances on stage to his enduring influence on generations of musicians, Tucker's legacy continues to resonate. Though he may be gone, his music lives on, forever immortalized in the hearts of fans around the world. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more deep delves into music icons just like this. Take care and bye for now.